Hey guys, welcome back to Anderson's Garage. I'm Jim, and today I'm gonna show you this Amazon plasma cutter. After three years of ownership and quite a bit of cutting, how it performs, what went wrong, I'll show you cutting some different thicknesses of steel. If you have one of these Amazon plasma cutters, please let us know in the comments what you think about yours and how it performs. I'll take off and show you what's going on. All right, so this is the Cut-50. One thing I did do is make the negative cable longer. I spliced in a piece of wire. It's pretty easy to do. That's something you'll probably want to do. So we'll go over the connections to get everything set up here. So the first thing we'll do is hook up our ground. You gotta have a good ground. The ground will go right here and it just locks into place. We'll remove this red cap. Now this cutter does have the touchless ignition. I think that's what you call it. So we'll put this on. That's for our igniter. So basically you don't have to touch the workpiece with the tip in order to get it going. So that one tightens down there. And then we've got this one here. I always take the cables off it when I store it so nothing gets pinched or twisted around, hopefully. So we got that set up. That's all the setup there is besides the air hose. We gotta run our air hose to it. Okay, so we've got it powered up. Let's turn it down. Let's go 20 amps. This knob, that's the time at which the air continues to run out. So I'll show you real quick. Oh, we don't have the air plugged in. Let's plug the air in back here. All right, so you hear it leaking. Mine has leaked since day one, so I haven't really investigated what's going on, but here's the air. So when I let go of the trigger, now if you turn this up, so we'll turn that back down. So we're gonna go at this L piece here, and we'll cut this out, quarter inch angle. Let's see how it does. Can't forget the ground. Let's put our ground on the back side. I know I didn't clean this up, so it's probably not gonna work as good as it should maybe, but let's see what it does. Now we'll go through some of this uh, 3 16 This was an angle that I cut the other side off. So we'll cut this, maybe we'll, we'll mark it out and we'll put some cuts on it so you can see. Let's imagine we need to cut a triangle out of this piece and see how we can do. So we'll turn this back up. Looked like it went through there pretty good, although jagged. So that's our triangle out of the 3 16 piece. We've got some quarter inch angle iron here. Now while we pause, I did clean off the ground. Now part of this is a self igniter. So let's see about cutting out a circle. So less of a circle and more like somebody chewed it with their teeth. And a lot of that is probably just uh, user error. Um, that one we didn't have a whole lot of slag on the bottom. And I didn't come up with any sort of template to cut it out. When you see it kick back at the camera like that and explode up, it's not cutting all the way through. And again, a lot of this is probably user error, but it will cut quarter inch 
like a knife through butter. So this isn't always gonna be ideal, but if you've thought about having one, been considering it for a while, don't wait any longer, get one for the $229 or something. Just doing fabrication sometimes. I wouldn't get one of these as your main tool if you were doing this kind of stuff every day. But for me, it made sense. I'd never used one before. Great to practice on if I tear something up or it quits working, it's only 229 bucks. And I, I gotta tell you, it's been through the ringer, probably 30 feet of this quarter inch angle and it never slowed down. You will wanna get yourself lots of extra consumables and they're cheap on Amazon. They sell them like 25 or 50 per bag. Just get a whole bunch of them. You know what else happened to this thing? At some point in its life, the power switch quit working. At least it got stuck in the on position and not the off position. So I would say for the money, own one. Go on Amazon, there's a whole bunch of different ones. I'll put a link in the description for this model along with the consumables. You'll want a good helmet. This is not a good helmet. This is a Harbor Freight helmet, auto darkening. It does the job. I bought these goggles when I was working underneath the car and these are great. You'll still be able to see afterwards, but be very careful because much like a MIG welder or a torch or something, you can get sunburn. And I did. Wearing these, oh, ah, they're upside down. Wearing these and using the plasma cutter and everything that was exposed got sunburned and it was painful. So don't do that. If you're trying to decide between the non-contact igniter and the contact igniter, just go with the non-contact. It's so much easier. You saw how it sparks as soon as I squeeze the trigger. So you can be off the workpiece and then move it on. So don't bother trying to run it off a of 110. You'll hate it. I'm telling you right now, if you don't have a welding, like a plug, a dryer plug set up or something, set one up before you try and run it. You might be able to cut some really thin stuff, but it just doesn't seem to work right with that adapter. Don't waste your time. And this one I think is about three years old. It cut all the steel and welded up the frame before I started filming on a Toyota Sequoia and again on a Toyota 4Runner. Those were both my vehicles and it did wonderful. So it did all that plus it's always getting brought out around here for something and it's three years old, it's still working. If you've been considering it, get yourself one. And like always, thanks for watching.